Okay, let's talk about Do the Right Thing. This movie, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, it's kind of a big deal. Um, it's considered a, a classic. Um, I have a couple of statistics here. It was um, selected by the National, I'm sorry, the Library of Congress for the National uh, Film Registry, which is only, you know, it's a, it's a list of the very best movies um, that are designated for special preservation. Um, the American Film Institute puts it on its list of 100 most important movies of all time. Um, it's, it's actually this past weekend, the New York Times um, organized some uh, quarantine pandemic thing where um, they suggested everybody watch the same movie and then it would be discussed and uh, they chose do the right thing and so there's been discussion about it in the in the paper so it's a it's a movie from 1989 it's it's not new but um, it's <clears throat> it's very well made um, it's an important movie in American culture and um, not only is it well made but it's still um, it's not just still relevant it's newly relevant um, in the age of, uh, of cell phones, <clears throat> cell phone videos, um, a lot of uh, encounters between police and citizens have been videotaped. And um, as you know, of course, there have been um, many videotapes of, uh, of police killing primarily African-American men. Um, and so this movie, which is, which you know, the climax of the movie is um, such a scene. Uh, it's become newly relevant, or maybe it's always been relevant. Uh, we now have video cameras in our pockets, and so the stories that we've always heard about um, police and uh, unarmed citizens, now we have evidence. So, um, the film is pretty good at keeping your attention, um, which usually means that, uh, that it's got a strong plot. So I want to begin there. Um, what we mean by a plot, it's, it's, uh, you know, something everybody sort of understands, but it's actually kind of hard to d define, um, the way it's often defined by people who study literature, it's something like this. Um, it's a series of events that are linked together by cause and effect. In other words, one scene leads to the next, not just because that's what comes next in time, but because what happens in this scene causes what happens in the next scene, which causes what happens in the next scene, and so on and so forth. Um, and that series of, of events um, are related because they're they they're centered on some important problem or conflict that needs to be resolved and the story the plot is the series of events um, working towards some kind of resolution of that problem so that's kind of complicated um, but to apply it to this movie does this movie have a plot um, we step back from it and realize that well a lot of it doesn't. The first hour and a half seems like it's kind of wandering um, and there isn't sort of a, a main storyline that's developing. But then at the um, hour and a half point, um, it suddenly does snap into um, a pretty definite kind of plot when Bugging Out and Radio Rahim and Smiley joined together to confront Sal and um, threaten to boycott and shut him down. So, you know, they confront Sal, and that leads Sal to smash the radio, which leads Radio Rahim to attack Sal, which leads the police to attack Radio Rahim and kill Radio Rahim, which leads the neighbors to uh, burn the restaurant. Um, and that's kind of the, the chain of events that, uh, that you know, it's intense. It feels like a, feels very much like we have a plot at that point. 
but um, the first hour and a half, there isn't some main conflict or main character whose story it is. Um, we see a bunch of little episodes instead of one main story, and each of those episodes has its own conflict and its own cast of characters and its theme, and um, we can see how, um, you know, there are these little miniature plots. Um, somebody steps on somebody's shoes, and, uh, and there's an argument about what are you doing in this neighborhood. Um, somebody, um, you know, the, the mayor um, knocks over a little kid that he's trying to save from getting hit by a car, and then there's a conflict with the mother, and, and on and on, right? All, each one of those, there's the, the battle of the radios. Um, radio Rahim and the other neighbors who are sitting on the stoop are having a battle to see whose radio is loudest. There's, you know, dozens of little conflicts that make little stories. Um, and each of those gets resolved in one way or another. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the big conflict, um, I guess, the big conflict gets resolved in the sense that um, Radio Rahim was killed and so there needs to be some you can't just end the film there because it's it, there's been this you know great injustice and there has to be some kind of response and so burning the restaurant um, becomes the response after the restaurant is burned people feel like um, the score has been settled um, and uh, that's the resolution of the movie um, well, so if we only, if we don't have a plot holding together the first three quarters of the movie, what does hold it together? Well, there's several things. One, um, it's set in the same place, right? It's this, it's this one block in this one neighborhood. And so because of the setting, um, it's got this, the same kind of recurring cast of characters. You see this, a lot of the same characters coming in and out of these different little scenes um, kind of recombining in different episodes. Um, and <clears throat> it's not only in the same, set in the same place, but it's also uh, at the same day. It's a 24-hour cycle. It begins with um, with uh, the, the DJ, Senior Love Daddy, saying, wake up. And it ends with him saying, wake up. Um, so it gives you a sense that, you know, this is all in one, you know, the fact that it's a 24-hour cycle kind of holds it all together, but it also makes you think that it's part of a cycle, that this is something that's repeating and uh, returning, which is part of Spike Lee's point. Um, incidents like this keep happening. Um, there also are themes that hold the first... 90 minutes of the movie together. Um, there's themes, many of the themes are pairs of opposites, and I should have brought something here that I could show you this with. Um, I'll just use this electrical cord. Uh, you know, when we talk about tension um, in a movie, um, what do we mean by that? Well, you know, we, we feel tension as, a, as an emotion in our bodies, but um, in a, um, we're talking about a plot and how a plot creates tension. Um, so I've got an electrical cord here, and when, you know, when, I, when it's slack like that, there's, there's not, no tension in it. But if I pull this hand in this direction and this hand in that direction, then I have tension on it, right? It's, it's being pulled in two opposite directions. Um, stories work the same way that, you know, when we talk about tension, what we mean is that there are factors or forces that are pulling things in two different directions. Um, the main tension that we experience in a story usually has to do with the, um, the, the plot, the characters who have different motives who are trying to pull in one direction or in another, right? Um, there's some kind of difference of opinion or difference in goals between the, the characters, and so they're in a struggle. And you, and you can feel the story is pulling in this direction because this character is trying to achieve this, and in that direction because 
that character is trying to achieve that. Um, so, in addition to the plot tension, there's also a tension um, in the themes in this story. Um, there's um, a lot of paired opposites that we see. Um, it's a very hot day, um, and there are lots of scenes where um, something comes in to cool things down. Right? Um, we have the fire hydrant scene. You have um, you have Mookie's sister Jade at, at her house with the, the fan going on. Um, you have um, Mookie's girlfriend Tina putting her face in the sink. You have the ice cream man. You have the snow cone man. Um, um, again and again, there's 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 the ice cube scene. We'll call it. There's um, lots of scenes where things are cooling down, and so you know the this this theme of hot and cold holds the whole thing together. Right? It's on a very hot day. Um, hot and cold also suggests uh, um, anger and sort of relief from anger. Um, which ties into another pair of opposites, um, love and hate in the movie. There's a lot of references to love and a lot of references to hate as pairs of opposites. And you see people expressing their love for each other and their hatred for each other. And so that kind of tension pulls us in two different directions. Um, there's, of course, there are differences between groups of people, particularly race differences. And, um, you know, there are um, several groups that are represented. There are whites and blacks and Latinos and Koreans and so on and so forth. But there's also, there's also a struggle between um, genders in this movie. And a lot of times I think that, uh, you know, it's the, the men who can't, um, who can't, uh, who, who, feel like they need to be dominant that uh, kind of drive the, the problems in the story. Nearly all the problems in the story seem to come from from the men. Um, of course, most of the characters are male. That's another thing. Um, okay, so um, there's another scene important scene where things are cooling down and that's <clears throat> that's uh, when the pizzeria is about ready to close and it's gotten dark out the sun's gone down and people are feeling the relief from the heat um, and Sal says you know, he's counting his money and he says you know we had a great day today and what a, what a good thing it is to have a family-owned business and Mookie um, you're just like a son to me, and you can see that, you know, Sal, who's been kind of a hothead all day, an angry, impatient guy, um, has, you know, chilled out a little bit, and uh, he's feeling, you know, very affectionate and upbeat. Um, but just before that scene, um, we saw the two sons, Pino and Vito, in the back room having a physical, you know, fist fight, a struggle over um, over whether they should trust Mookie or not. And so, you know, on the surface, it seems like, to, to Sal, it seems like, um, you know, wow, I've got this great family business and everybody gets along. Um, beneath the surface, there's a lot of struggle. Right? There's a lot of um, um, animosity, dislike of each other, and distrust, and so forth. Um, so that's kind of, you know, sets the stage for that last scene, last um, sequence, I guess we'll call it, um, in which the um, police kill Radio Rahim and the um, pizzeria is burned down. Um, there's an, an awful lot of anger and a lot about an awful lot of issues um, leading up to the um, 
the, you know, the problems that happened that night. Um, let me get my magic blue board here. Um, one way to think about it is, uh, you know, we have um, Radio Raheem and Buggin' Out and Smiley. Each of them, they combine and go up against Sal. Right, um, and that's the conflict that that kind of brings down the brings down the story, um, brings down the restaurant, ends up with somebody getting killed, um, and you think, well, why did that conflict happen? It didn't have to happen. Um, well, um, it's not just about you know, bugging out wants to close down Sal's restaurant because they're not brothers on the Wall of Fame. Well, um, why is that such a big conflict? Well, it's not, the conflict is not just over that issue. Um, bugging out, of course, is angry about the lack of representation of African American men on the Wall of Fame because he lives in America where that's a problem all around. That, uh, that there are racial inequalities or, or you know social differences because of racial differences, um, and so you could say that you know all these different things that have happened to him in his life and in that particular day, um, they all kind of add up and make him angry towards Sal and what Sal represents. Smiley, the same thing. All day long he's been trying to sell his postcards and he's been disrespected including when um when um pino the the racist brother um publicly disrespects him so you know each of these have some particular conflict with sal and radio raheem does because of the conflict about turning his radio down but then again, you know, um, all the different conflicts that people get in throughout the story are all kind of, they've, they've made people angry and on edge. And all the same thing is true for Sal. There's been all day long the conflicts he's had with these characters and with others, and everybody's just kind of had it, right? And that's how this thing that seems like it's kind of made up and coming out of nowhere um, having pictures of brothers on the wall of fame. Why is that so important that there has to be a fight to the death? Well, it's because it's because of what it represents um, and all the all the kind of grief that's behind it or leading up to it. Um, I want to make a point that uh, um, this movie um, is complicated. Right? that um, well-made stories, well-made art doesn't necessarily um, resolve things. You know, we talk about resolution of a story. Um, how do things get resolved? Um, well, in real life, of course, things don't always get resolved. Um, often they're unresolved. And Good art, I think, a lot of times leaves issues unresolved. Um, part of the point um, that uh, you know serious artists often are working towards um, reflecting reality in a way that uh, what they're trying to reflect real life, and because real life doesn't often get um, kind of neatly wrapped up. Um, artists often like to show the complexity and the messiness and the kind of ongoing, ongoing lack of resolution in issues, right? Um, so whatever, whatever themes they might be exploring, writers often leave a lot of things about that theme 
unresolved. They're trying to reflect the way that that real life hits us, right? Sometimes we like to see stories that show complex problems getting resolved. That's satisfying. Um, it may be satisfying, but uh, um, it might be more realistic to show how those problems have not been resolved in real life and to, you know, I think do the right thing. That's definitely um, where um, Spike Lee is, is, is leading us. The issues are very complex and he's working to show that, right? He's not working to show, he's not trying to simplify those complex issues um, and he's not trying to resolve them. He's trying to just show them and explore them, right? Exploring is what a lot of serious artists do, exploring themes and exploring problems. Um, so, you know, um, a good interpretation of the movie, in other words, a, a well-written essay on the movie is almost certainly not going to be one that that shows how things resolve into, into you know, a clear answer or a simple um, explanation of this side was right and that side was wrong. Um, a good interpretation is going to show how the movie is representing all that complexity. Right? Don't feel like you need to, um, to choose a side or something like that. Um, some examples of the complexity that the movie has, you know, at the very end, um, we get a quote from Malcolm X and a quote from Martin Luther King about the place of violence in society in solving problems. And this, the two quotes kind of say the opposite thing. Martin Luther King says that, that um, violence just causes more trouble. It makes everybody brutal um, and um, leaves everybody blind, as he, is, as he says. It just leads to more violence. Um, whereas Malcolm X says sometimes you got to use violence because if things are unfair in society, um, you sometimes need to use violence in order to make sure that uh, that you're you're treated well. Um, so the story, you know, <laughs> the story of the movie um, can illustrate either one of those, depending on you know which which one you want to choose. They they both could be represented by this movie and the, the movie doesn't tell you which one of those approaches Spike Lee the director thinks is right um, just presents them as two different views of the truth another maybe easier um, example is when Radio Rahim has his his brass knuckles that say love and hate and he shows this little play of um, he says this is this is life. Sorry, my phone's going off. Um, he says he says this is life, static, right? And he's got the fingers all kind of joined together, um, static meaning unchanging, kind of like you know, stuck in a particular state. He's showing that love and hate are mixed up together, right? And, and then he has a little play where he shows that love and hate are fighting and um, looks like hate is going to win, but hold the phone, here comes love and uh, uh, uh. love wins in the end. And you think, oh, that's a good story. Um, love wins. That's a, that's a nice sentiment. Um, but if you think about the fact that light, uh, love wins by killing or destroying hate uh, through violence, then uh, that's not such a clear-cut illustration. It's, it seems like it's a, it's a little drama that's supposed to illustrate the complexity of things. Did love really win if it beat the hell out of um, the opponent? Um, okay, so um, so I think a lot of times people look at this movie, you know, as they do real life. Um, if this is a movie that 
in a lot of ways captures some of the complexity of real life, then people are going to look at it and take away from it um, the same lessons they take away from real life. And I think it's good to be careful about that. Um, you can find a character that you identify with and, and come to believe that that uh, that character is right and the other characters are wrong. Right? And uh, um, that can be your interpretation of the story. But, you know, um, in some ways, all the characters are the good guys and all the characters are the bad guys. They, they, they're complex, they're, they're good and bad people and they do the right and the wrong thing and they're um, victims and perpetrators, and it's, a, it's all kind of mixed up together, right? Um, <clears throat> um, there's a scene near the end of the movie when, you know, when, when the pizzeria is burning and Sal is taken across the street and you know, Mookie takes... Sal and his sons and takes them across the street and puts them behind a gate and they watch the restaurant burning from there and Sal is saying what did I do what did I do um, as though he did nothing and he's an innocent victim um, that tells you how he's looking at the story um, but you know we can tell him what he did wrong he was uh, very provocative uh, provocative not only not only, you know, by smashing the radio and using um, such, you know, ugly race, racial slurs, um, but earlier in the day he was very aggressive and disrespectful, and it doesn't mean that he deserves what happened to his restaurant, but he contributed to it. Um, likewise, um, after the police kill Radio Raheem and he's taken away, and the crowd is is yelling at, at Sal, um, somebody in the crowd is yelling, he died because he had a radio, he died because he had a radio. And well, that's not really true either. That's, that's another kind of simplification that, that Radio Raheem was, was just an innocent victim and just because he had a radio, he died. Um, he was disrespectful and he, you know, attacked Sal. You know, of course, Sal attacked his radio um, so everybody, everybody is, you know, tangled up in this story. Um, um, they're all in some ways likable characters and in other ways they're behaving badly, right? So the movie, the movie, um, and your essay, your essay should reflect that because that's what the movie is showing. Let me get my pen here again. Um. And uh, I think these are some words that we've talked about earlier in the semester when we were looking at um, at um, Robert Frost, ambiguous and ambiguity. Things that are ambiguous um, are mm, they, you know you know what it means to be ambidextrous. You you're both left and right handed. Right? So something that's ambiguous is kind of like that. It's it, it kind of it's undetermined. It can it kind of goes both ways. It's 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 vague, it's fuzzy. Um, ambiguity is a noun. That's the, the noun form of that. So the movie's full of ambiguities, it's full of lots of ambiguous things. Um, and yet it's got this title that sounds very simple. Do the right thing. Um, well, you know, we should always do the right thing. Um, we should always make the right choices. But, uh, of course, life is a lot sloppier and more complicated than language. In, in, in language, we have clear terms like right and wrong. In reality, um, we have behaviors or actions that have both good and bad consequences kind of all, you know, mixed up together, right? So, um, one last thing 
for this video um, about uh, about the ambiguities and people's views of the problem. I talked about how Sal sees himself as being a victim um, and says, what did I do? What did I do? At the very end of the movie, the last scene when Mookie comes to collect his pay, um, um, there's another example of love and hate. He takes, you know, Mookie says he owes, you owe me $250. And so Sal gives him 500, which is, you know, that's more than he's owed. And why would he do that? Um, well, I think it's another example of love and hate being mixed up together. He knows Mookie's out of a job now, and he gives Mookie twice his salary. But the way he does it, he takes the each hundred dollar bill, and throws it at him, and and you know shouts uh, disrespect to him to the neighborhood. Um, and then Mookie says. You only owe, owe me two fifty. You take it. And Sal says, "No, you take it. No, you take it." And then Sal says, "I can't believe this shit." And what he's referring to is, you know, I can't believe that we're arguing over who's going to take this money. Um, but in a bigger picture, he's talking about, I can't believe, you know, how do, how did we get here where my restaurant's gone and Mookie no longer works for me? Um, I I can't believe it. He says, "I don't believe this shit." And Mookie says, believe it, because I think Mookie, <clears throat> um, because he lives it, he's aware of uh, he's aware of the oppression that happens in America. Um, we talked about that, I think, uh, earlier this semester, that uh, um, people who are oppressed are more aware of um, the oppression than the people who are doing the oppressing. Um, it's possible for somebody like Sal not to be too aware of it because he's not burdened by it as much as Mookie is. All right. Um, so that's an introduction to the movie. And then I'm going to record three more videos about this movie. And each one will be on a different character. And then you're final exam essay is going to be um, written on one of those three characters. I have three topics um, that will be chosen at random and assigned to you when you take the test. Uh, test It's not a test. When you write your exam, I mean, it's not an exam. When you write your essay next week, um, you'll be given one of three topics that I've written and Moodle will randomly generate um, which one of the three topics that you get assigned. Um, and they're going to be on those three characters. So you want to think about those characters um, and uh, um, stuff that I talk about in the video will be pretty directly related to the, the stuff that's going to be uh, they're pretty directly related to the questions. So if you're, you know, if you watch the videos, you'll you kind of know what I'm going to ask um, for each of those three topics. Okay, first up is going to be Sal. Um, so the next video I'm going to post later tonight will be Sal. See you then.